As we've already had read out, um, the, our vision for 2021 is Psalm 1, which um, I encourage you to take home and read it every day. This is you. Everything I do shall prosper and come to maturity. Everything I do. The Word of God, when it's given to you and it's prophetically giving, been given to you, as the, God spoke to me and said, this is the, your scripture for the year, then we need to take it in and we need to expect things to happen and everything that you do shall prosper and come to maturity. Doesn't mean it will happen straight away, but just trust in God. Know that things will happen as you sow the seed. Praise God. As we start off the year, we've got up there, what shall we do? Well, first of all, the definition of insanity is the next slide, if we can look at that. And if Demi can just find my glasses that are somewhere around there, I can read it, but um, uh, it could be in my bag or wherever, or it might in the car. So insanity. It says doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Over and over again and expecting different results. We've all done that, haven't we? If you do the same thing over and again, you'll get no change. Could be in my jacket pocket, Demi. So praise God. So, well, what would Jesus, um, what, what has Jesus told us to do? We're starting this new year and uh, difficulties and problems and so forth. What has Jesus told us to do so that we're not insane? In John 14, the next scripture, if we just look at that up there, and I know it's a lot of scripture, but scripture is fantastic to read, guys. You need to read the word of God. You know, one of the things that's happening in the world today, in the church, not in the world, the world doesn't read the Bible, but in the church is so many people are not reading their Bibles. And, you know, big churches, small churches, they just come along and it becomes like a tradition. Coming to church is a tradition. I know you're not doing that type of thing because you're all perfect in clear vision and you, just, you know, and you read your Bible every day. We hear from our sister Betty, the advice she was given was to read some scripture every day. And if you read some, a little bit of scripture every day, you don't have to read for hours, read some scripture and it will bring forth fruit. I'm getting into a can and out of a can here. as it sound. So let's have a look at it. Here it is. I assure you most solemnly I tell you, this is in John 14, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. So the Lord, this is a well-worn scripture and you may surely think, I've heard it a hundred times before, but you need to act upon it and move in it and believe it and all the people said. So if you agree with me, that's great. It says, and he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Okay, so this is Jesus speaking to us. And I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name. Whatever you ask, whatever you ask, I will present to the Father. Uh, it's, it's a scripture that just blows my mind. This is the Amplified Version, verse, uh, verse 13. And I will do, I myself will grant, Jesus, whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. The I am has died for you to have peace. We've heard that today and raised from the dead. He's, he has died and, and raised from the dead that we may be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. That we may uh, receive an authority and power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That we uh, shouldn't be uh, in kindergarten anymore. And that means just coming to church and thinking that's all it's about. No, you know, church is a family. God should be everything. The body is everything. When, when you die, you're not going to uh, be promoted into the job you're doing or you, you uh, perhaps uh, uh, everything changes. You're in the kingdom. You're with God. You, uh, you, you, you're going to, we've got, to, we start an eternity of eternities. That doesn't make sense, but it does. We start eternity of eternities. We're going to live forever, not sitting here with me wearing a microphone. I won't need a microphone anymore. I won't uh, be going out driving a car and all sorts of things. Um, uh, the, the indication of the scriptures are you'll be able to think and move from one place to another. There's going to be amazing miracles will take place. You won't know the limitations of having a body, uh, a natural body. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, it says, and we'll put on a, a new form. And, uh, of course, we've been through scriptures where we'll be able to recognize one another, and Demi will know me. And she will think, well, Ray's even more handsome than he was when he was alive in the natural. 
I hope. And uh, so we still will know each other and our kids and all that type of stuff, but there will be a total different relationship that takes place. So presenting all that he is, all that Jesus has done for you, we present uh, when we pray. And it says, in my name is presenting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified and extolled or lifted up in through the Son. Verse 14, yes, I will grant myself, will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name. Now, the Lord has repeated this. So you've got to get this into your psyche. He said, whatever you ask in his name, he will do. Now, just in case the person missed this, can you tell the person next to you? Whatever you ask in his name, he will do. Someone can come over to Bronwyn and just tell her because she didn't hear what she said, okay? <laughs> just, Jackie, just go to tell Bronwyn. Just tell Bronwyn what I just said. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. That's good. Did you hear that? Yes, yeah, she heard it. That's really good. So it goes on and it says, Shall ask him my name as presenting all that I am. So there it is, presenting all that Jesus is. He's accomplished everything for you and I that we might have eternal life, that we may no longer uh, know God after the flesh, but know him through the spirit. He has given us something that's really, really special. So it's something that we need to, to think about. Now, if you want to read that scripture at home, following on from there, it talks about the counsel of the helper, talks about the Holy Spirit and the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, and I encourage you to do your own Bible study on that. Well, we need revival, don't we? We don't want 2021 to be another year where we get one baptism, two baptisms, three, and that's about all. No, we need revival. We, one of the things that, we, that uh, Tonya's screaming out for and the girls uh, and the family, Tonya's family, is for revival to happen in this land. Revival. Now, if we're, uh, we listen to the prophets in this great south land of the Holy Spirit, we know the Holy Spirit's just not going to move on his own. There's got to be a hunger and a thirst for him to move. And you know all the stories over the times um, before revivals have taken place in history have been through just groups of perhaps quite often misfits who've been praying regularly and as a result of their prayer and dedication, God swoops in. He, just doesn't come, he swoops in and we see suddenly this explosion of, of, of revival. And people, there's no advertising, people just suddenly turn up at the church. And uh, you don't have to go on buses or anything, they just come here. So I really encourage you to get involved in prayer. Revival. Well, I'll just to read this article. This is a Baptist pastor, and it says this. We need a revival. We need an awakening. We need a Jesus movement more than ever in history. I don't care. That's my phone. I've just turned it off. What you call it, but we need it. God has done it before, and I believe he can do it again. The Holy Spirit is alive. It's in my bag, Demi. Sorry. Sorry, guys. It's in my bag. Who's the person ringing me? Okay. You're ringing me? <laughs> That's right, it's in the bag. If you undo the zip, Demi, this is embarrassing, isn't it? Um, I, I should uh, turn my phone off. And I, if you can all turn your phone off, phones off so that doesn't happen, otherwise uh, Leon's going to ring your number, all right? He's just preparing now. Look, I've got that cheeky smile on his face, all right? Praise God. So I'll continue on. It says, on December... 2020 um, Long Hollow Baptist Church had a regularly scheduled baptism service that has turned into an incredible movement of God. Pastor Robbie described it as a movement of God that I've never experienced. It started with a powerful testimony from a man who just recently lost a loved one and Pastor Robbie was prompted to ask if anyone else wanted to be baptised. So this guy got baptised. One by one, people decided to be spontaneously baptised. Ninety-nine were baptised by the end of the service. Since then, the church has hosted several other baptism services during the weekdays, and at last count, they had over 187 people baptised. Now, that's a move of God, isn't it? One of the testimonies, one of those who got baptised was formerly a satanic uh, worshipper. And it says, she didn't think she could be saved because of all the horrible things she had done. I told her that was a lie. The guy who brought her to our church had been a Satan worshipper for 10 years. Now, there's plenty of Satan worshippers around. There are, spiritual, there are uh, spiritualist churches who pretend they're Christians, but they're Satan worshippers. No other word. They pretend they're not, but they are. The Mormons are Satan worshippers. They are not Christians, okay? 
They, they worship the god Mormon, uh, which is a, a death god. And of course, they're all into uh, going through genealogies and death and praying for the dead and all this type of stuff. It's another group. The Jehovah's Witness are not Christians either. They say that you can only be saved through the name of Jehovah, not through the name of Jesus. They are a sect. So don't get confused. They're, they're nice people. They come to your door. They're lovely family people, but they're on the wrong road. You have got the truth, and all the people said. So let the truth set you free. And it said, I had baptized him, and now he had brought her to church. Never had this happened before. After the service, one girl sincerely asked me, what do I do with all the witchcraft stuff that I have at home? I said, burn it all. Now in the Philippines, they come out with their trinkets. Some of them are are, are demonically uh, possessed. And you pray with them, and the demons go, just like that. And then the first thing you say to them, you see the trinkets around, sometimes before you pray, you see the trinkets and you say, those trinkets have got to come off and you've got to throw them in a pile and we're going to burn them afterwards. And if they won't take them off, you won't pray for them because those trinkets quite often are given by witch doctors and they've got curses on them. Don't you understand there are curses that hang around stuff that you possess and you've got to get rid of it because it can affect you. And uh, if someone's looking for God, they need to reject all forms of witchcraft and evil uh, uh, doings. That's why uh, people who play with the Luigi boards and all this type of thing, and uh, with the glass going around, and I did that when I was young, need to reject those type of things, repent, because Satan spoke to me out of me with the finger on the glass. I nearly died when it moved, and I could feel it wasn't my finger pushing it, it was an outside force. So just remember, there is a demonic force out there. And I'm trying to explain to you that we in the Western culture don't want to talk about stuff like this. We push it aside. There are people coming in here who are possessed with demons and we're dealing with them at the moment. You need to realize that the devil is is really rising up. We're in the last days. We see all the sorts of things that have happened over in America We see, uh, of course, Trump out, and uh, we see the New York Biden in, and all sorts of laws will be changed. Well, uh, uh, the devil is behind people. And so uh, I think one of his first appointments is a a, a transient person, a male who who now has become a female as one of the ministry uh, people in, in his cabinet. So, hey, hold on to your horses. Didn't I say to you, this is the, the coronavirus is only the beginning. It's going to get worse. It says that in the scriptures. So the light of the church needs to shine more and more. You need to know the power that you've got because you're going to use that power to set people free. God has appointed you and anointed you to do this work. And all the people said, Amen. all right, so... Praise God. He said, burn it. I have been hearing stories of God working in powerful ways like this across the nation, and it makes me wonder what he has prepared for the days ahead. Last year, a small team of Christian leaders from a variety of backgrounds and denominations used social media to call one million young people to fast and pray at the start of the decade. We are called, we've called it the Roaring Twenties Fast. And thousands of people joined us for 21 days of fasting and prayer with focus on consecration, asking God to move in our hearts to prepare us for the roaring 20s. The 2020 happened. God knew what he was doing, preparing his people for the year that will go down in history. During this season, God continued to move, but also pruned and shaped the people in the church. What if 2020 is a ploughing, is ploughing the ground for great revival and harvest in 2021? What if we're here in 2021? This is what this pastor's saying. When I think about the local um, youth ministry that I lead, COVID-19 hurt our overall attendance numbers, but the strength, unity, vision of our student leaders is at an all-time high. God is preparing the college students to be world changers. Isn't one thing, a phrase I keep giving you is you are born to make a difference. You're not born just to come to church and sit and listen to me. You're born to make a difference. When you leave this place, that's the church. You are church going out and influencing the community. You heard William talking about uh, this person he spoke to. There, there's a Eunice. Went and spoke to two guys yesterday. And we prayed that uh, one said he was going to come. He didn't come. Don't be disheartened. You know the number of people who say they're going to come and they don't come. Once upon a time, I'd get in my car and I'd say, I'll pick you up in Adelaide uh, on, on Sunday. And I'd drive from my house all the way into town 
down and they wouldn't be there. We can get disheartened. But I tell you what, let us, let's keep putting in the time, reaching out, because perhaps 2021 is the year of revival, is what's being predicted around the place, and we need to absolutely allow the, God to use us. Two words I want to have seared into your hearts or minds today. For the next slide, the two words that are going to come out are accept and expect. Accept. My, I can hear my mum, she's repeating it. Accept and expect. Is that right, mum? Yep, she's got it clearly. Accept and expect. Well, I suppose it's really important. Let's go to the next slide. It's Luke 10, verse 19. Now, you know this scripture really well, but let's see. Behold, I've given you authority and power. I challenge you, accept that authority and expect the power that you've got. You can accept that as well. Expect that power to be flowing through you when you speak to people, when you pray for them, when you speak to your financial problem, when you speak to the financial difficulty. Guys, we need to absolutely expect the impossible to happen. One, one of the things that Tonya uh, encouraged us to pray for the other day, she said that the impossible miracles will take place like new organs appear in somebody and uh, uh, a, a leg grows, a foot grows when someone's got a stump and they're walking around on a prosthetic uh, a leg. Impossible things because, you know, you can go up to your people and say, oh, yeah, I had a headache on Sunday and, and uh, Tony prayed for me and the headache instantly went and they think, yeah, what a lot of garbage. I bet they, oh, yeah, just went away because it wasn't really there or, or you know, mind over matter. But when a leg grows out or suddenly a, an organ appears inside of a person's body and it's confirmed by doctors, they can't say this is rubbish and it's a lie because God has done something that's absolutely amazing. So Tonya's praying the right way. We should be expecting impossible miracles to be taking place because you speak out under the authority and power of God. Because he, Jesus said, you have authority and the power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. What does that represent? Scorpions, speak out on, you won't get, the enemy. the enemy, satanic influence, Satan, scorpions and, and uh, serpents, and physical and mental strength and ability, God will give that to you, it's a pity role he's not here today, I was going to target him with that one, mental strength, mental strength, mental strength, you're going to need mental strength, you're going to be bombarded on every direction. They're going to, uh, the gay movement who are speaking about tolerance and all inclusiveness and all this type of thing, when it comes to Christians, they target us and want to shut us down. How hypocritical is that? The church accepts gay people. Absolutely, we love them. We love all people. We don't care who you are, what your practice is. Christ came for us all and we were all sinners. And all the people said, whether you're gay or not gay, we're all sinners. And Christ came and gave his life that we might have eternal life and be forgiven. Amen. And he's poured out his authority and his power on us and given us ability and power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall by any way harm you. In a sense, you will never lose your salvation as you allow and trust God to lead you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are enrolled in heaven. Woo! Your name's written down in heaven. You're enrolled in heaven and the Lord already knows you. In fact, he knew your name before you were even born, before the foundation of the world. God knew you. That's how important you are. So you see, it's not just coming to church. Not just coming to church. I just had to slap my hands. Couldn't I? Not just coming to church. I'm being mean now, okay. It's not just coming, it's a lifestyle, a family. Church is the body, the body of Christ. We are one, we are one. All things should be flowing from the body. We are the answer to the, 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 the downfall of this world. There is no, we heard from Catherine last week, there's no other plan. The church, us motley lot who are here, is the only way that the world is going to be delivered through the message we have. There's no other way. So when you hear the part, we, we hear Tonya calling us to prayer, I think the same, oh, that early in the morning? Yes, that early in the morning. Let's, let's, let's make the effort to come along and be involved because I'm telling you, if you want to move, if you want to move the hand of God, you need to be sincere. And I can be just like 
we can all be the same together. We just come to church and we just do this and do that. And uh, our life is full of work, full of all sorts of things. And, and perhaps you don't even have time to, to think about God. We need to change our priorities. Change your priorities. We're looking at eternity of eternities has been built into you. Things need to change for 2021. Remember, if you want the year to change, well, all you have to do is keep, keep doing the same things. That's the definition of, of sanity. Things will never change. So there we are. There's various things. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, as we look at the impossible, you know, Paul was not on the island of Malta where he got, uh, he picked up these sticks, he was shipwrecked there, picked up these sticks, a bundle of sticks, and there was a windscreen viper in the middle of these sticks. The story goes, it wasn't really a windscreen viper, it was a viper, it was a snake, and it bit him. And all the uh, superstitious people of that island looked at Paul and they thought, he's going to swell up and die. That is, a, a, he, he obviously must be a sinner, and that's a, a retribution against him from God. And of course, Paul... He believed in the scripture, you know, um, about laying hands on the sick and, uh, you know, uh, uh, picking up a snake and it, you won't die and poison and all the rest of it. He knew that scripture. So he knew nothing was going to happen. So he didn't swell up and die. And then the local people, when they saw that he didn't die, they suddenly thought, he's a God. He's a God. Look at this. And they wanted to sacrifice to him and do all this stuff. Now, we can be the same today. Sometimes evangelists get so uh, full of themselves as they see healings flow through the church, suddenly the focus changes from uh, God to them and we see them building up and so forth and people are uh, exalting them just like they try to do with Paul. But Paul turned around and said, no, no, there's only, it's God. It's all about God. And that's what we need to never take our eyes off of is our God, if, I'm, if that makes sense and all the people said for this to happen, we need to know the extent of God's power. If you wanted a change in 2021 and you don't want to be insane for this year, then Ephesians, the next scripture, and a well-worn scripture again, it says, and so that you may know and understand, now uh, um, uh, Catherine read this scripture out last week, I believe, what is the um, um, uh, measurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us. Now, if you read those, those words, look, Immeasurable. Now, number one, you've got to understand it, okay? Can you say understand? And then it says, the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of God's power in and for us who believe. So you've got something inside of you that's beyond your wildest dreams, okay? I know the first time Demi and I, I think it was at your 50th, wasn't it? When did I give you a surprise take to Bali, wasn't it? We went to Bali. And uh, Demi didn't know anything about it until right at the end, and she had to because I had to get a passport and everything else. But I remember coming up to that time, um, you know, we had this expectation, it's going to be a fantastic holiday, Bali, everyone's going over there, we'd never been there. And uh, we had this excitement, and this, uh, 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 it was all in awe, fantastic, this holiday's going to be. Well, in like manner, we should be in awe for the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of the power you have inside of you. Now, some of you can go, yawn, what's been happening in 2020? Well, perhaps you need to absolutely step out and uh, start having a real talk to God and say, Lord, what needs to change in my life so that I take the lid off the well and allow the power to flow? Because you've all got it. When you're baptised with the Holy Spirit, you receive the power of God inside of you. That It's talking about the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power. Therefore, we read the scripture earlier on that said, everything you ask, presenting all that he is, he will answer you. Because inside of you, you've got an immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So next time you're sitting on the bus next to somebody and you say, would you like me to pray for you? And they say, get lost. They won't say they say even ruder. Um, not in, interested in religion. You just remember this. Inside of you is an immeasurable, unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power dwelling inside of you. So instead of getting depressed and think, oh, little old me, nobody wants to hear, rise up in the power of God and you pray inside of you that that person is going to be touched by the Holy Spirit. You see, the only way people are going to listen if God brings them revelation before they even know him. 
That's what happened to Demi and I. There was a revelation. These people were raving on about miracles and everything else, but God gave us this understanding, a, a like, a, 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 an itching. Something is amazing here. Now, God needs to move upon that person. That's where prayer comes in. And even if they reject you, you pray in the bus. You don't have to stand up and, and pray out loud. Just pray inside your, your brain that the, that the Lord will move upon this person and we see things happening. Demonstrate in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead. Isn't that good? But what about the Christians who say, next slide, what about the Christians who say, well, Martha... How can you say there's stuff in Australia, the big push is on death legislation, euthanasia and abortion? Well, Martha, what about Iran? They're predicting that they will have nuclear weapons before the end of 2021. Goodness gracious, Martha. Israel, they're, they're suggesting a preemptive strike on Iran. Where's that going to leave the world? And we're supposed to be looking on the bright side. What about China? They're, expect, they're rejecting our exports. Australia, our farmers are going to go bankrupt, all this stuff. And look about England, COVID, they're dying in the streets. I've never seen anything like it. And we're supposed to have a positive spin on all this. Floods in Queensland. What about the bushfires? Oh, horror. Next slide. This is what we might be like in your life. You might be like this. Got to keep you together. We see, of course, rush hour, the boss, all sorts of things and problems and difficulties. The scripture in Philippians 4 verse 6. If you haven't got this underlined in your Bible, tell the person next to you they must underline Philippians 4 verse 6 in their Bible. Oh, some people are talking. That's good. Philippians 4 verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Presenting all that he is before God. Whatever you ask in prayer, God said he will give it to you. It has to be done according to his will. So don't ask for a Cadillac and a jet plane and all this because you're not going to get it. Unless there's a reason for it and there's going to be massive revival through that particular thing. But generally, we don't pray for stuff like that. But God will provide for us what we need. The answer to this world's problem is the little figure on the left is the Bible. He's holding it out. And we need to present the word of God. That's what you are there for, to present the word of God. We've got to keep answering the questions. Okay, so what are we going to do in 2021? Ray's been raving about not being insane for 2021 and changing things, okay? Next slide, let's just look. What shall we do? Well, the same as always, we need to, to do the same as Jesus uh, taught us and the Bible teaches us. And in Second Chronicles, you can read this, write this down yourself, Second Chronicles chapter 20, I want you to read that for homework yourself, but in verse 12, it's got the Moabites, the Ammonites, and uh, the Meunites, I don't usually um, read about them, but the Meunites, they're all pagan foreign people who had it in for Israel. Almost like the world has it in for the church today. Okay? They tried everything, and a great multitude, the Bible says, came to attack Israel. And Israel, the people uh, uh, asked, what shall we do? Like I put to you, what should we do in 2021 to make things d different? The king at the time was King Jehoshaphat. Can you say Jehoshaphat? He was a king of Judah. Now, he sought God. Now, what does sought mean? Yeah. He prayed, okay? Because if you're seeking God, you have to pray. You can't seek God without praying. You have to seek him. Lord, I seek you. Lord, help us. So he sought, he sought God, number one. And the second thing is, the, the bit I don't like, but Tonya loves, is he proclaimed a fast. I don't like fasts, all right? You, you already know I don't like fasts. But, you know, they prayed and, 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 and the king declared a fast amongst the nation of Israel. Because you know why? They were fair dinkum to make sure they weren't going to be slaughtered and annihilated. And we, if we're fair dinkum, and you don't want the church to be slaughtered and annihilated, and you know it can happen, except the Bible says it won't, because we'll be praying and fasting that it doesn't take place, and we are the power of God uh, on the earth, walking around in bodily form today to reach people out there and take the message to them. Isn't that correct? It says, 
the prayer, O God, O our God, will you not exercise judgment upon them, all this horde? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now, isn't that true? My mum's reading it out loud. My, is that right? My eyes are upon you? She said yes. No matter what takes place, our eyes need to be upon God. Isn't that correct? Okay. Five things about this scripture that you're going to read at home. The next slide. Five things about Second Chronicles chapter 20. I just want you to have a look at. Five things that my attention was drawn around what Jehoshaphat did. He committed the situation to God. Calling the church to pray more is we want to commit the situation where we're not getting revival take place to God as a, as a body. Number two, he sought God's favour. We need to seek God's favour in everything you do. I know, we've already got God's favour, but we want favour upon favour. We want favour to flow before us, behind us, around us, in every direction, that people are going to see there's something different about us. Isn't that correct? Number three, acknowledge God's sovereignty. I don't care how big the enemy, how many, even if our Prime Minister gets rolled, if the elections come up and Labour gets in, I don't care who's in Parliament, we have a sovereign God and he's going to protect his church. Isn't that correct? Yes. Amen. That's going to take place. Number four, he praised God's glory and took comfort in his promise. Remember, God said to you and I that you're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Let's believe the promises. Lay hands on the sick and they shall... Number five, profess complete dependence on God for deliverance. God is going to deliver you and I. Well, as uh, this story goes... And I've got a few minutes to go. The story goes like this. This is multitude of enemy, just like we've got out there today. It seems more and more people are leaving churches and just uh, sitting on the sidelines. We've got enemies left, right and centre, politicians passing all sorts of legislation, which when I was a a young teenager, you never imagined people would be so um, death-focused in destroying humanity the way they're they're going with the divorce and all this type of stuff that they've legislated for. But we know that God has has an answer. So if we look at the next slide, God spoke through Jazeel. Jazeel, I think that's how you pronounce it. And he said, firstly, he said, Hearken all Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says this to you, Be not afraid nor be dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Who's the battle? God's. It's not yours, it's God's. There's certain things we have to do. Click it once more in the next part. of You shall not need to fight this battle. Take your positions. So number one, you've got to take your position. Are you a real Christian? Yeah, I know. I'm talking about a real Christian. We can all get filled with the Spirit, baptised and all this stuff. We can do all the stuff, but then just sit on the, go- the sidelines. We've got to be active warriors. In Ephesians, it talks about taking on the full armour of God. That means whoever that's referring to is in a battle, or we wouldn't need the full armour of God. Isn't that correct? Okay. Praise God. I mean, I can just imagine if we're given, given uh, armoury, we've got to use it. That'd be just as silly as Peter Teed going out on the golf course there with his, uh, with his golf buggy and his, and his putter and all the rest of it, and he just stands there and doesn't use it. People will be leaving him behind and thinking, Peter, what's wrong with you? You're insane, Peter. Why aren't you using your equipment? Well, Christians are like that. We can be like that. We need to use the equipment, the spiritual equipment that God has given us. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, did I read that? He said, Hagen all Judah, and uh, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Lord says to the, uh, that's right, uh, he says, your position, stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. Stand still. Don't be a flake jumping from here to there to this idea to that idea. Be stable in what you believe. Stand still. Don't be full of ang- anxiety and uh, allow the devil to absolutely be equipping you with worry. Pray about everything. Worry about nothing. So we've got to stand still. We've got to take our position and see the deliverance of the Lord. And it goes on and it says, um, um, The Lord of Judah of Jerusalem, fear not and be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Praise God. So we see all these things taking place. Take your position, stand still, see the deliverance. And the Lord is in the midst of it all. Isn't that correct? 
If we go to the next slide, is Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. Okay, and it says, When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy, in their holy priestly garments. And they went out before the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his mercy and his loving kindness endure forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were self-slaughtered. Praise and worship. I really encourage you to think about this. I know some of you travel a long way to get here, but please don't make a habit of coming after praise and worship. You know, praise and worship is so important. You don't realise. You don't realise. They sent their praise and worship team out before the army because the presence of God, the Bible says the Lord dwells in the, in the, middle of the midst of the praises of his people. Now, either you can just say that and not think about it, that means when you're praising, we praise together, the Lord is here. And when the Lord is here, see what happened with them. The Lord was there. They didn't have to fight. The enemy fought each other. And so you need to think about in your family, those who are being motivated by Satan in all sorts of selfish, terrible ways, you need to be praise and worshipping that the Lord sets ambushment against the thing that's behind them, the spirits behind them, and destroys it so that they can be set free. Don't, don't pray horrible things for your family. Pray good things. Expect the Lord to move and touch your families and make a difference. It's 2021. Three times seven. Seven, the seal of God is on you. When you pray, the seal of God is on your prayer. You may not believe in Bible numerics or not. I don't care. But there's something special about this year that's going to happen. Isn't that true? And I want you to believe it with me as we look at the scripture. Well, next slide. Okay. Do you want the presence of God in your life and in the church? Yes. Everyone says yes. Next slide. Let's have a look. Well, 2 Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. And all the Levites who were singers, arrayed in fine linen, having cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets. Some people complain about loud worship. <laughs> Can you imagine being in the middle of this lot? You know, I brought up in the Church of England. Yeah. A few hymns, no noise whatsoever. And then you move into paradise or whatever they're called now up there. And when I go up there, my, the church goes... Vroom, 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 vroom. Okay. Well, perhaps it's going to be worse when we get to heaven. All right? When we get to heaven, there's, we see here, look, they had lyres, they had trumpets, cymbals. Imagine some, some Colin behind Demi getting the cymbal going... Tung! Demi going... <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens. A noise, but this noise is to praise God. The noise to praise God. Next slide as we just gradually come to an end. In verse 13, And when the trumpeters and singers joined in unison, making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments for song and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good. His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Isn't that what we want? Yes. Who's seen the, the pictures, the videos of um, Bethel? And they're there worshiping, worshiping God. And they're just worshiping God. Like, and there's all people criticize Bethel and they criticize every church, you know. Whenever people have revival, you get criticised by the church. It amazes me. But anyway, there they are, praising God, and there are people like you and I getting into it, and suddenly, it's like dust comes in. Have you seen those videos? Dust comes into the church, and it's not little bits. There's like whole... If you'd been here the other day when we did this carpentry work, the whole floor was full with sawdust. And that's what's happening in this church, that church. And it's not just that church. Other churches have had the same experience. Okay, So we see the Holy Spirit. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Can you imagine that you come one morning, you scratch yourself, oh, I don't really want to go to the prayer meeting, and you come to the prayer meeting, and suddenly God comes into the house? You will freak out. You'll be on the floor, even if you don't believe in falling over, and that's fine. Believe what you like. You will be on the floor and suddenly you think it's true. God has come and he's answered our prayer. And it's not for us to fall on the floor. It's for us 
to carry the anointing of revival to speak to people out there. They need it for 2021. The world is going to... Absolutely. Look at what's going on. People are going to start screaming out, what can we do? What should we say? Where can we go? Next slide, I think there's one more. Let's see what comes up. So that the priests could not stand to minister because the cloud uh, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Isn't that absolutely amazing? One more slide, just to recap, and I've gone five minutes over time, which I'm glad, I'm, I'm sure you'll... Five things. We've been through those. Think about them. Committed the situation to God. Sought God's favour. Acknowledge God's sovereignty. God can do anything. If he said, the scripture's there, me and my household should be saved, don't put up with your kids being rebellious. They can be rebellious all they like, but you constantly pray about them. Don't bother trying to sort them out. You pray that the Holy Spirit will sort them out and move upon them. Pray, number four, praise God's glory and took comfort in his promise. He promised these things to us and we need to see them happening in 2021. Professed complete dependence on God for deliverance. And we just have one more slide and that's the finish, I promise. This is what we're told to do. What do we need to do? The battle's not ours. We need to take our position. Stop getting involved in all sorts of weirdo doctrines. You know, get rid of it. Just believe the truth, what Jesus spoke about. Don't delve into stuff so much that confusion prevails. Just believe the truth. People are not going to listen to you if you're into conspiracy theories. Okay, if all you ever do is talk about conspiracy theories, they won't listen to you. You need to preach gospel, Bible, Jesus, the things that that Jesus would have spoken about. Take your position. Stand still. Don't let anxiety come upon you. Stand still and say, Lord, you've got to take care of this, which quite often means you need to alter your priorities. And the third dot point, see the deliverance. When on your praise, she sees every chair in this place filled. When you pray for someone, you see the thing happening before it happens. All right? That's faith. You see it happening before it happens. You want your family coming to God. They may be on bongs and doing all sorts of things, I don't know, and and doing ridiculous. You see them saved coming to church before it happens. You just keep seeing it and praying for them. See it, pray. See it, pray. And you see what takes place in 2021. Fear not or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them for the Lord is with you. There's certain things we have to do before tomorrow comes. Certain things we have to do before tomorrow comes. All those points are there. Take position, stand still, see deliverance, fear not, don't be dismayed. Then we go out against them. For the Lord is with you and you go out through the power of the Holy Ghost. And all the people said. Can you stand and say hallelujah to God? Thank you, Jesus. We praise and glorify your name this day. Thank you, Jesus, as we look to you. Hallelujah.